Hi, my name is David Watson. I'm the founder and CEO of Rent Vision. Today we're going to give you a high level overview of Google Ads. This overview is helpful if you're new to Google Ads, but I'm also going to point out a few things to think about how to measure the effectiveness of your Google Ads that would be highly beneficial for you, even if you've been doing Google Ads for a long time. Now to help illustrate um, the cost effectiveness of Google Ads, we've drawn a target here. And at the middle of the target uh, is the letter D. The letter D stands for defensive. And we're gonna first talk about defensive campaigns within your Google Ads. And they're at the middle of the target because they are the most cost-effective campaigns to run in Google. What is a defensive campaign, you might be asking? A defensive campaign is one where we are protecting your name. For example, we have an apartment community right here in Lincoln, Nebraska, where we're located, called Lexington Ridge Apartments. A defensive campaign would actually have an ad that will show up if somebody searches Lexington Ridge Apartments or Lexington Ridge Apartments in Lincoln, Nebraska, or something along those, those lines. And now a lot of people say, hey, why would you bid on your own name? That community website is going to be the first result. And the reason we would bid on our own name is because there are other types of campaigns called competitor campaigns where a nearby apartment community would be targeting that community's name. So if somebody searched Lexington Ridge Apartments, uh, maybe Steeplechase Apartments comes up. That's a made up name, but it might be first and maybe there's a second one and a third one. And next thing you know, your competitors are crowding out your screen real estate. They're showing up first, second, third, and your apartment listing might be below the fold, or in other words, you have to scroll down to see it. It's kind of like one of your competitors standing in front of your clubhouse, handing out flyers to all your best prospects. You don't want them to do that because they're gonna steal some people away. Those people are gonna look um, at, at their particular apartment communities. So we wanna be there first, make sure that those people click and come to our website. And so we're gonna run defensive campaigns to protect that. Now, why did we put these at the middle of the bullseye? And the main reason is because these are the most relevant. So defensive campaigns are the most relevant to the searcher. Now let's take a, a step back here and think about um, Google and what they're looking for. Google is in the business of providing relevant content to their end users. If somebody's searching for Lexington Ridge Apartments and they uh, get advertisements about cat food, they're not gonna click on it. But not only that, they're going to have a very unhelpful, unvaluable, poor experience on Google search engine. So Google doesn't want that because that will um, lower their likelihood of, of coming back to Google search engine later. So Google has to measure the relevance of different ads and they want to serve up the most relevant ads to people. And the reason they want to do this is because if an ad is more relevant, it gets a higher click-through rate or CTR. And um, this is uh, actually really important for the apartment marketer is to measure your click-through rate. And why is that? Well, because a higher click-through rate is going to be, result in a lower cost per click or CPC. Now, let's put back on our Google hat and ask ourselves, why is this? Some people think that whichever ad is bidding the most on a cost per click basis is going to be listed first. So let's uh, act like somebody is bidding $5 on a cost per click and we are just bidding $1 
on a cost per click basis. Somebody that's new to this might assume the ad bidding $5 on a cost per click is going to show up first and the ad bidding $1 on a cost per click is going to show up second. However, what if we have a 50% click-through rate on this one and this one has a 5% click-through rate? Okay, now let's imagine that these ads get served up 20 times. So we have different uh, people searching and these ads uh, get served up uh, 20 times. The first ad is gonna get clicked on 5% of the time or one time and they're gonna pay $5. Google is gonna make $5 in revenue on that ad. Now, the second ad gets served up 20 times it gets clicked on 50% of the time. That is 10 clicks times $1 per click. Google makes $10. So Google makes twice as much on this ad as they do on this ad. Even though this ad, they're spending five times as much money, $5 per click, and this one's only spending one dollar per click. So even from Google's financial perspective, they want to serve up the ad where the bid is only one dollar per click. So we want to exploit this as an apartment marketer. The more we can focus on relevancy, um, we're going to serve Google's customers better. So Google is going to have the incentive of their brand and uh, the client experience on their search engine uh, to promote that for their future revenue. But they're also going to drive more immediate revenue uh, because their click-through rate is going to be um, higher. So that's why it's, it's uh, highly important to think about relevance. And one way to look at this target is the closer we get to the bullseye, generally the more relevant uh, the ad is to the audience searching. But it gets better. It gets better for the apartment marketer. More relevant ads is gonna result in more engagement. What do I mean by engagement? You know, we often measure employee engagement um, or customer engagement. And in this case, you know, we're looking at our prospects and we're kind of looking at prospect engagement. And we're asking ourselves, are they clicking through and are they engaging on our website? And one of the key things that we do to measure engagement is we look at time. Now, if you're experienced with Google Ads, or if you've talked to other people about Google Ads, you will hear all kinds of things related to engagement. What was the click-through rate? You know, um, what was the bounce rate? Uh, you know, bounce rate if they come and then they leave, and and uh, you know, what was the cost per click? And and there gets to be all these debates about which ads are most effective. And we had this at Rent Vision for a while. Um, we had marketing advisors with different opinions and executives with different opinions. I had my own opinions. And so I, I sat down one time and I said, hey, how can we really, really simplify measuring the effectiveness of our digital ads? And the key is by looking at time. Okay, so we um, did a study and we, we looked at people who turned into leads from a website. And what we found is people that converted into leads spent three to five times um, on average as much time on the website as the average visitor to that same website. And uh, so um, and th this makes perfect sense. If somebody spends time on your website and they're looking at floor plan photos or they're watching walkthrough videos, uh, they're much more likely to turn into a lead than somebody that comes and goes. And we can see how this um, you know, matches things like the bounce rate. Um, 
But we said, okay, how do we, how do we measure this? And what we actually wanted to do is we invented a new metric and it's called cost per minute. In other words, we're buying time on the site. Okay, so um, what is cost per minute? Well, um, what we wanna do is we want to measure how many cents or dollars does it take for every minute of time on the site uh, for the user. So let's say we spend $10 on some campaigns and we get five visitors or five clicks to those campaigns and they spend two minutes on, on the site. Now that equals 10 minutes. So now we have $10 of total cost times 10 minutes, and we get $1 per minute. So our total cost is a dollar per minute on this site. Now we can see if our cost per click were to go down, in this case, our cost per click is, is about uh, $2 because um, we have five clicks at, at $10 a piece. But if our cost per click would go down to a dollar, <throat> now this top number would be $5 and our cost per minute would be 50 cents. So if our cost per click goes down, uh, our cost per minute also goes down. However, if people spend more time on the site, maybe they spend double the amount of time on the site, that also is going to lower our cost per click. And other metrics, uh, such as our bounce rate, if we have a high bounce rate, that's gonna lower the amount of time somebody spends on the site. And so then our cost per minute would go up. <clears throat> All of the main metrics across Google Ads tend to funnel in to cost per minute. And so this is just a great singular metric to measure the cost effectiveness of our digital ads. We know people that are searching for your apartment community are looking for your apartment community. And so they're gonna spend a large amount of time on that particular apartment community's website. And because it's relevant, Google wants to show it, and because it has a high click-through rate, you're gonna have a lower cost per click. And so here we have the lowest cost clicks and the highest engagement of those clicks. And we're gonna see really, really, really low cost per minutes. So these campaigns are so cost effective, you can't afford not to do them ever. We recommend running them all the time. <clears throat> now let's expand a little bit away from the center of the bullseye. And we're gonna talk about these top two layers and I'm gonna draw an O there and that stands for offensive. So we're gonna talk about offensive campaigns. And the first one we're gonna talk about is broad, just broad offensive campaigns. Now, what do I mean by broad offensive campaigns? Um, oftentimes we go to clients, and let's say we were to go to a client here in Lincoln in our, in our headquarters. They would say, hey, I wanna be the number one listing when somebody searches apartments for rent in Lincoln, Nebraska. And this is a common question we get, whether it's apartments for rent in Kansas City or apartments for rent in Dallas, or, um, but we always get this question all the time. And wouldn't everybody like to be the, the first listing you know, for those particular keywords? But the problem is uh, these keywords are not relevant. So, um, And here, here's what I mean by that. Let's go back to our example of Lexington Ridge Apartments. Lexington Ridge Apartments is in Northeast Lincoln, Nebraska. And that apartment complex is about 15 to 20 years old. It's a class B property. Somebody uh, might be wanting to live downtown, which Lexington Ridge isn't. They might be wanting to live on the Southwest side of town. 
They might be looking for a class A, brand new luxury, high end, you know, apartment community. They might want an apartment complex that's, you know, near a particular employer in town or a particular school in town, of which Lexington Ridge may not be the uh, closest or, or very close at all uh, to that particular spot. So people searching for apartments for rent in Lincoln, Nebraska, the chance that they're interested in Lexington Ridge becomes very, very, very small. And in other words, it's not necessarily as relevant. That's going to lead to a lower click-through rate and a higher cost per click. And so our, our cost for each one of those clicks really skyrockets. Then, if they happen to click on that ad, and we start to measure their engagement, oftentimes they're gonna come and quickly find out this apartment community had nothing to do with what I'm looking for. I'm looking to be you know, close to the southwest side of town and that's in the northeast side of town. And, and so um, they're not gonna be very engaged, they're not gonna spend much time on the website and our cost per minute is going to go way, way up. Now, um, in a future video, we'll talk about when these ads can be uh, cost effective, but today we're not gonna, going to cover that. So oftentimes we want to step down uh, here and focus more on narrow, narrow offensive campaigns. And I just made that term up, but really we want to hone in those key words in order to increase our relevancy. So I know a little bit about Lincoln, um, but this will make sense to you too. Keywords like apartments for rent in Northeast Lincoln, Nebraska, or apartments for rent in Lincoln with a short commute to Omaha because the Northeast side has a short commute to Omaha, or apartments uh, that uh, have a short commute to the law school. Um, so there's a number of key words um, that are a little bit more narrow that are gonna increase our relevancy really, really, really substantially uh, for those keywords. That will increase our click-through rate, lower our cost per click, and it's going to raise engagement on the website in order to lower our time on site. Um, one of the cool things that RentVision actually does is we measure the cost per minute across different campaigns and then we actually run machine learning uh, to optimize our clients' budgets to spend money exactly where that money should be spent in order to maximize cost effectiveness. We'd recommend um, utilizing that as well. Machine learning can really automate a lot of this once you have the key metric that that machine should, should learn on. So that's a quick high level overview of defensive ads and offensive ads. You know, the last question is, what is this key, uh, uh, this ring here um, right outside? And we call these remarketing ads. Remarketing ads. So you've probably experienced a remarketing ad or, or many, many of them in your life. Um, one common example is you'll be on Amazon and you'll be looking at a particular product on Amazon and then you're on the Weather Channel and you begin to see ads of that particular product that you were just looking at on Amazon. That's a remarketing ad and uh, because it's following you around, it's essentially tagged your computer, put a cookie on your computer and said, hey, this person has looked at this particular product and so we want to begin to display that product to them. Now, these ads are relevant because these are the people who have already looked at your specific apartment community. And you can even dial these lists in more. You can say, hey, we only wanna target people who have looked at the community and looked at several pages or spent more than X amount of time on the site or looked at this specific page. But at, at the end of the day, these people have looked at your apartments and we want to be following up with them. We say remarketing ads are the 21st century way of following up with people um, because you will uh, be in front of them all the time. Now, cost per minute 
is not necessarily the best metric for measuring remarketing ads. They may not click through that ad even if they see it, um, but there is some value there in just staying in front of them. And, and, and studies show this does build up trust. And these are the types of people you, you want to build your brand up with because they're in the middle of the buying process. And uh, just little impressions with those people can make a big difference. So that's why we put remarketing ads right outside the defensive ring. Typically, we recommend remarketing ads to run 100% of the, the time as well um, because they're just so important. These are the key people. Um, they're very cost effective to run. And generally, we like to allocate a certain percentage of, of your budget uh, to those particular ads. So I hope this video has been helpful to give you a high level overview of digital ads, understanding how to talk about the different rings, focus on relevancy, that's gonna drive uh, you know, engagement and, and ultimately lower your cost. And remember, measure your cost in cost per minute. That one metric will clear out all the fog and help you understand exactly uh, which campaigns are most effective and where you're going. Thanks for joining us today.